Hello, everybody. Uh, just a quick note about pandemic stuff. I don't want to uh, take a lot of your time, and you know a lot of things already, but I want to give you some context you may not have heard yet already. Um, it's clear that younger people like yourselves probably have less interest in keeping super safe just because, as everybody knows by now, compared to older people, you're much, much less likely to die. You're maybe a tenth of a percent chance if you catch the disease, whereas someone like my mother who's 80 years old and immune compromised, it's more like a 20% chance. You're less likely to be hospitalized, but you are just as likely to catch the virus and spread it. And that's the fundamental reason why you should care about all the pandemic communication that's been thrown at you guys over the last few days as you've come back to university. Now, even if you are not here at UC San Diego physically, there's some good things that you should keep in mind, and that's just what I want to go over really quick. Um, so the important thing, because you are a transmission vector, is that you could end up transmitting this virus on to somebody who is much more likely to die, to a friend who has to go home to visit their parents, and in, their uncle is a diabetic, and in his 60s, and oops, right? So you have a responsibility to keep yourselves uh, doing a really good job. And in part, the reason for that is because San Diego State students have already ruined this for everybody else in San Diego. Uh, the Cal State system comes back to classes about a month earlier than UC. So uh, immediately, Freshmen were running around having parties and not obeying any kind of reasonable safety precautions. The whole county of San Diego got mad at them because San Diego State almost made the county of San Diego have to go on the highest alert level. We came within a hair's breadth, literally one day away from being forced to close down all the businesses in the county for endorse anything. So. When San Diego State came back, as you can see in this chart, you can immediately see the bump up in the 19-year-olds. It's literally just the freshmen that affected, you know, when there's 7,000 freshmen produced a bump in the numbers of new cases that was big enough to be seen in a county of 3.3 million. So quite a lot of infection very quickly. And the reason was that nobody was obeying the rules that they were laid out for. So you guys have a return to learn program. Please follow the guidelines. Please don't be jerks running around pretending that there's nothing happening because while you may be good, you think, you know, um, other people may not. And even you yourselves, even though you are young, you are at risk for pretty bad complications. You may be fairly unlikely to die from the disease, but it is the case that even college athletes, elite athletes, who are pretty seriously in shape, have been showing a pretty serious inflammation around the heart in a pretty decent set of cases. So 15% meet a clinical definition of a very inflamed heart tissue, and another 30% of these student athletes who had caught COVID had this evidence of, law, of damage and swelling around the heart. These are serious deals. I know somebody who's an ultra marathoner who caught COVID back in March, and it was maybe June before he even like went on a long distance walk. So big deal. All right, so again, listen to what's been given to you out of Return to Learn program. It's very important that you follow the guidelines. In particular, I wanna point out a couple of things. If you test positive, please tell the contact tracers who are going to come talk to you everything you've done. People may be, they may be motivated to not tell all the things they did. You may feel embarrassed that you did go to that dorm party and you didn't, you know, you knew you shouldn't be doing it, but you did it anyway. And maybe you feel too embarrassed to tell anybody about it. Please don't because if you are truthful and honest with what happened, then they can grab those people before they infect more people. 
and we can stop the chain of transmission from getting to somebody's diabetic uncle who's going to die of this disease, okay? So um, another thing that I want to highlight is obviously you should spend a lot more of your social time outside and with some distance between y'all, um, and masks help tremendously. Um, I do have a pet peeve about masks. There are so many people who think that a mask is a fashion accessory and not actually an implement to stop the spread of the disease. I know it's frustrating. I know it's hard to wear a mask. I know that it can be, you know, oh gosh, I forgot my mask. What am I going to do now? But it is still the case that if everybody wore a mask, studies show that if everybody wore a mask, even if it wasn't a very good mask, we could very quickly stop this disease from transmitting on average. So basic mask use, um, I think that everybody knows uh, these people. You've seen them in the past. Um, the, uh, I think that my personal favorite is the reverse Batman, the nose out of the mask, like it doesn't actually matter. Um, I have been on the receiving end of somebody actually pulling down their mask to sneeze right next to me in a CVS of all places while we were looking at cold medicine on the shelf. Dude whips down his mask to sneeze all over the shelf, like within seven feet of me. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is something that you need to treat right. And I'm sure that you have an idea of how to do it right. It's just that we're all tempted at times to take shortcuts. So uh, that's about all I wanted to talk about today. I really hope you all have a great uh, quarter and I'm looking forward to chatting about technical topics with you on the next uh, lecture. Have fun.